Hello everyone, and welcome to a corner of a room in my parents' house. Today, I would like to talk to you about my version of what I'm doing in quarantine, and what we can sort of learn from the past. Firstly, I shall use my astonishing powers of deduction and conclude that whilst you're watching this, you are wearing some form of sweatpants, pyjamas, or other modern loungewear. And I judge you for it. Now, myself, here you see me in my own form of loungewear. That of a flamboyant Regency gentleman from about, sort of, 1810. The garment I'm wearing is called a banyan, and has a fascinating history. They are oriental in origin, and they first enter the world of Western wardrobe in the late 17th century. And at that point, they are more akin to a kimono or other form of robe, a much looser fit than the more tight-fitting coat style you see me wearing now. In order to make Banyan seem more exotic and more desirable to the Western world, they were called Banyans, instead of perhaps robe or wrapping gown. Because after all, as we know with things, you give it a fancy or funny or exotic name and people will buy it because marketing, and it hasn't changed. We give things certain names to make them more palatable or to make them more desirable. So for example, calling something polyester instead of plastic, you know. It's quite tricky now to find a modern equivalent to the Banyan, as it treads an interesting path between perhaps a modern smoking jacket and a dressing gown. A Banyan was formal enough to receive guests, business acquaintances and everything in your own home, but not formal enough in society to wear outside. It was very much an at-home garment. However, in 1785, there's writings in the London Gazette of young gentlemen going out, wearing their hats, um, canes, swords, and everything else, but with a banya instead of a coat. Now, it was seen as quite a young, rakish thing to do, but also, the, the material that a banyan would be made out of would have been an expensive silk or some form of expensive material and you wanted to show that off. And if you're a young bachelor and have no one to show off to, well you go out wearing it. It wasn't really the sort of thing you see. However, in the hotter summer months, less so in England, but you see it in Europe, but a lot of the time in the colonies in America and in the Caribbean, gentlemen wearing their banyans instead of their coats. It's one of those things that is acceptable under extreme climates. Something that tips this notion on its head is when President Thomas Jefferson receives the um, British equerry at the White House and the, um, the British equerry comes up to the door, knocks and in full state rig, you know, embroidery and hat and everything, and knocks on the door, reads out who he is, and who answers the door? Not a servant, not a butler, not a guard or anything, but Thomas Jefferson himself, wearing his banyan, and loose breeches and all of this, and you think, that's mental because this is meant to be quite a formal um, meeting, as it were, you know, meeting of two countries in a diplomatic outreach, and Jefferson knew exactly what he was doing. He, what, he, his whole presidency was about being a little bit more relaxed, but he knew what he was doing with fashion. So it has two very interesting meanings. One, it could be seen as I'm disrespecting you by not dressing up in the same way that you have done or would be expected of this occasion. But also it's a way of going, hey, we can be friends, come on in as one gentleman to another. So it's open to interpretation. However, it was seen as a great insult, regardless of interpretation, and it caused a diplomatic nightmare and a bit of a scare 
Um, and when you think about that nowadays, clothing doesn't really have the same sort of ability to do that anymore. You have politicians maybe wearing an ill-fitting suit or something, but that whole notion that clothing has such intrinsic meaning, value, and poignancy isn't so much the case anymore. So the banyan that I am wearing is actually inspired by the one worn by Mr. Walter Elliot in the 1995 adaptation of Jane Austen's Persuasion. Persuasion is also my favourite Jane Austen book, but that's something I think perhaps for another video. Some interesting design elements about this banyan is that it is um, it's from a design called Pineapple and Parrot. So, as you can see, parrot on my shoulder, that was a deliberate design choice, and pineapples here and then all over the place. It's a fun thing to wear, but would have been a heavily expensive fabric at the time, which would have meant that if I received guests wearing this, they would have gone, oh, expensive fabric, and this is just for him wearing it at home. So it's an interesting show of conspicuous consumption. This banyan is also quilted. So it's like wearing a socially acceptable duvet all the time, but looking absolutely fabulous whilst doing it. We have to remember that houses weren't as well heated as they are now. So to have something warm you can wear is really no different for you reaching for another jumper or putting a hoodie on. It's just, it looks this much better. I absolutely love a banyan. I've got, I think about three at the moment, but I've got plans to make more. And one I'm particularly proud of making was one I made for the Handel and Hendrix Museum in London. Now what's interesting is that the house was originally bought and stayed in by Handel when it was first built. And then, of course, he lives, he dies, and then, you know, 200 years later, Jimi Hendrix moves in. So it's a really fascinating museum because it's got the life of George Friedrich Handel and Jimi Hendrix in it as well and it's an astonishing museum and I was privileged enough to make a reproduction banyan that was worn by Handel so I did a lot of research into the materials that would have been available what was fashionable but also Handel is painted quite often in banyans and various things like that, because he's an artist. They were favoured especially by artists, and you see artists, philosophers, musicians, and more loose sort of gentlemen being painted wearing them. And what's very interesting about Handel's banyan is that it's an asymmetric design, sort of similar to a Turkish um, garment, which was really, really interesting to work out. And it's a lovely um, red silk taffeta with death head silk buttons, and then there's a lovely red braid, and then lined in white silk. Now, I suppose I should address the elephant in the room. The reason why we're all stuck at home. It's a very tricky situation for all of us. We are separated from loved ones from those that we hold most dear. We find ourselves a little trapped and unsure of what to do. But what we're doing is vital in the fight to stop the spread of this awful disease. So stay at home. I suppose all I have to say to you is stay safe, stay home, Stay well, and enjoy your quarantine however you like. Bottoms up. Mm.
salted caramel. That's lovely. Testing, testing, volume, volume, volume. Class is going slightly mad in quarantine. Anyone else? Anyone else going a little bit insane? I'm just really missing traveling. <laughs> Practical and provocative.